All right, so without further ado, I'd love to introduce our next speakers. We have Luz Maria Mack here, who uh, is a bilingual storyteller and author. Luz Maria Mack was born in Villa Mea, Dominican Republic, and migrated to the United States as a young child with her family. She comes from a loving and big family that is a recipe for laughter and lots of beautiful memories. Luz is a happily married and proud mother of three beautiful children. Luz is a Dominican children's author who has earned a master's degree in public administration from Metropolitan College of New York and works as a healthcare professional in New York City. You can learn more about her at luzmac.com. And Luz will be in conversation with Jeanette Seja, award winning bilingual journalist, uh, travel advisor, and global public speaker. I will pass the mic to you too. Take it away. Hola. Hola. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here. Hello, Luz. Hello, Jeanette. This is so exciting. <laughs> so exciting. Um, I'm honored to be able to have the opportunity to, to chat with you and to share more of your story uh, with the Power to Fly uh, audience as well. And uh, coming here straight from Miami. So we're on the same time zone. That's nice. And so Luz, um, you know, we are still, you know, Hispanic Heritage Month may still be going on. You know, I, I like to celebrate 365 all year round, which I think is yes. amazing. Um, you're a proud Dominican and a mother and you have so many achievements and amazing things that you are doing. So I'd just like to dive in deeper to our audience and tell us a little bit more about, you know, who is Luz Maria Mack? Tell us a little bit more about yourself and any of your, who were your inspirations growing up? Well, thank you so much for that question. And thank you everyone for being here. Um, it's so hard to share my achievements without talking about my family because I feel like they're the reasons that I celebrate my Latinidad. Um, they're the reasons that I have become such a trailblazer. I come from very humble beginnings in Villamella, Dominican Republic. A lot of my family still resides in Puñal, Santiago, which is like a little remote town. And traditionally, a lot of them were farmers, like a lot of the women were caretakers. And a lot of the men were uh, hard workers. And I still have those fond memories of them working so hard the land because agriculture is really big in the Dominican Republic. And we knew the importance of working hard through their examples. When my parents made the decision to move us to the United States, it was only to bring more opportunities. So I didn't quite grasp that as a young child, as you could tell, uh, when we we're young, we we're like very attached to our home, to our families. I had like many fond memories of growing up there. So coming to the United States was kind of like a, like very different. For one, not everyone was outside. Like I would wake up to like loud sounds of music, animals and like friends already like up and at them here is very different but it shaped me in a way that I was like you know I don't have to leave my Latini that back there I'm bringing it here and this is the beautiful part of the United States we all have merged this beautiful culture one of another and now as an adult I'm a mom and I have three beautiful kids and they're the reasons why I work so hard to share our stories so they are my legacy and my future storytellers, hopefully. And I love that. And, and you know, that's probably what we'll love to segue into next because you're also a children's book author of multiple books. And can you tell us, um, share with us a little bit, what inspired you to write the first of your many children's books? Because I know it's a great story today. <laughs> yes, so uh, I live in New York City and as many parents know, it's really hard uh, once your child is of age to look for schools. And me and my husband made the decision of putting our children into private school. And although we were really excited once we got accepted into private schools, I didn't know we were going to uh, kind of learn all over again, like the school process of when your child makes a friend, it's like you're making a friend and like learning to make play dates and all that. So my daughter, the youngest, uh, when she got into the nursery program, she was the only 
Latina and only half black child. So that was like really uh, unique to her. And she felt very much like an outsider because all her friends had like this beautiful vanilla skin. She wanted to look like her friends. A lot of them were blonde with beautiful yellow hair and short. So one time when I picked her up from school, I still remember she had like this cute pup updo hair, you know, because uh, she, uh, she has a uh, beautiful curly uh, jet black hair. And she was like, mama, we have to dye my hair blonde. And I'm like, wait, what? And I was like really taken aback from that statement. Like, I want to be blonde. I want to look like my friends. We're going to, she's like, and I remember like she was so little, she will pull and tug on her little bun. And she's like, I don't want this bun. I don't want my hair shooting up. I want it straight. And uh, I was really concerned, but it took me a while to realize that this was not coming from anywhere. Like how, how could, how could I be blind? Our culture and our society celebrates a lot of kids that do not look like the kids I grew up with. But I, it took me a while to kind of notice that what she was evoking is like a need to feel like she belonged, a need to feel like she was accepted. So uh, I went back to school with her. I shared my concern with the teachers and they were so gracious. They made a class and the whole class project, it was so cute. Uh, they took a uh, vanilla chocolate and caramel and they made everyone blended and say how we all taste yummy like and we're all different flavors and she encouraged me to go back home and share with my daughter who we are as a family like where do we come from because the way she looks like is not per chance she looks like us and and it's really wonderful so I started doing a lot of storytelling telling her about who I was as a young child just like her because I was also not very confident and that's what led me to write my first book Maria Pequeña Maria Little Maria and little did I know that inspiration will make her want to write a story of her own this year yes which is just absolutely phenomenal and I think you know I look up to you, Luz, you, what you're doing as a mom, you know, as a, as a Latina as well. And just, you know, one of my dreams is to be a mom. So you're somebody that I definitely aspire to be. And I think it's great what you are doing for the youth, for younger generations. Um, Thank you. You know, I think in my own journey, I, I didn't see myself a lot of places, especially in the travel space, I could say. And that's kind of what, you know, I, I, I didn't see as many women as I, I would have loved to. And I didn't see as I didn't see many Latinas or Latinos. So I think sometimes when you see that, it pushes you to be the change that you want to see. And I think you're a great example of just doing that. And your daughter has now self-published her own book. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, um, that was my biggest pride when she told me I'm going to write a book <laughs> and I helped her do it because I'm, I'm sorry, I just jumped in. But it was just exciting. I was like, <gasps> this is like a full circle. Like she was teaching me to embrace what I'm doing because sometimes as a writer, you struggle with that. Like you deeply struggle, like struggle, like why am I doing this? Does it matter? And like, she made me realize all over again, I matter and she matters. That is so beautiful. It's like, I want to cry. That's so beautiful because I mean, gosh, that's, I mean, you're just, yeah, probably such a role model in her eyes, like many of us. Um, and, and, you know, what you bring to the table too, is also the diversity that exists within the Latino, you know, and Hispanic um, demographic and community. And, and we're so diverse and we, you know, we can learn, for example, from you in the Dominican Republic, which a lot, like I have not been to yet, but I've been always wanting to go and to learn more so I can learn through you. And like my family, is from Mexico, I learn from them. And every time I go back, you know, I just, I'm like always so amazed by so much in the, in the history and the culture. So I think it's great to have you as a voice and writing the books to the younger generations because, you know, we can learn from each other you know, and, and I was just at this conference here in Miami and I've learned so much through so many incredible Latinos, so diverse, um, coming from all different um, backgrounds and experiences. Um, so what is something that you still lose, aspire to do? I mean, is there anything still on your, you know, bucket list or something that, you know, you dream about doing? I mean, you've accomplished so much. I mean, correct me, you have 11 children's books already and <laughs> 
Yeah, I have <laughs> I have just, quite a few. Like, um, yeah, but I, 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 I do know, feel like uh, I I still feel like there's more to do because um I think my last uh book that I wrote about Maria, um, uh, not the last one that I that just came out, um it was about Maria Descubre Su Baile, Maria Discovers Her Dance. And it was a child learning from other children, their cultural dance, their folklorico bailes through dance. And it's like so much about embracing Latinidad. It's not like a one-sided story. And I showed Maria learning how to dance, Jarabe Tapetillo, that is from beautiful Mexico. Uh, El Cha-Cha-Cha de Cuba. Um, merengue from the Dominican Republic and uh, bomba from Puerto Rico and um, El Joropo from Venezuela. And this is just so little. This is so little. And I, my whole goal is like, we talk about inclusivity and diversity and I want my books to kind of share the message that we don't have to check out our race or our culture and leave it out the door when we go someplace we could bring it wherever we go because that's how people learn the beauty of who we are and I feel like all my books share a window of who I am as my personality and who I'm embracing so I feel like we have so much more to do with Latinidad I'm so proud to be one of many storytellers who are like really aiming to do that and hopefully our kids uh who will be not only our role models in the future, they kind of take that on because uh, it's 2021. There's still many stories of people becoming new to what is Latino, what is Latinx, what does it mean? Is it about the food? Is it about the dances? Is it about the skin color? It's so much more than that. It is, it's our way of life, it's our families. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful opportunity, Luz, what, what you're doing um, as a storyteller, as a voice, and the power of storytelling um, to, you know, to such a, a big audience, including the youth and the children. Because here's something that I realized, too, you never know who's watching, you never know who's listening, you never know mm -hmm. who's reading, you never know what one thing you could say or write that can change the trajectory of someone uh, especially, you know, a young, a young, you know, girl or young boy that they're like, wow, I can do it too. And, and I think that's great. And I think you, can, you should keep going and, and keep doing more. And, <laughs> you know, how, how can we as a community support and empower, you know, you and, and I know you have another, can you also tell us about the most recent, um, oh my gosh, with, with, I believe Disney. Can you tell us about that? Because that's amazing. We had to that, that. That was really amazing, and I got to work with other fellow writers on that project. So it was just happy that I was not the only Spanish uh, author. There was so many others, and they were close friends. And so I worked on this project. I actually have it nearby. It is family is everything from the movie Encanto that's coming out? And it was so funny because when I I uh. I got the book, I cried, like I literally cried because I think is, you know, I was feeding my inner child, my inner soul, like who, I mean, who did not grow up singing those Disney songs? Like who did it? I mean, I was singing them in Spanish, but they were Disney. <laughs> like, I was singing them all along. Yeah. So it was like that one moment, like, yes, like I had no idea me writing a book would take me that far. And that's what like really landed on me. And I know my kids think like I'm a little overwhelming because I'm like, embrace the ugliness, embrace the mistakes. They hate that. Like they literally hate that. But that's what it has to be. It came from an ugly space. My daughter didn't feel like she belonged. She felt like an other. And we've all had those moments and we have to kind of like dig deep and see what it brings out. Cause I wasn't expecting it was gonna bring this out in me. And it did like little did I know me helping her feel affirmed. It will help me in the future feel affirmed as an individual. 
Yeah. And I think it just elevates your why, your purpose, you know, that's so much bigger than yourself. I mean, and you see your daughter and how it impacted positively her and maybe others that are to come. I have three young nieces. So everything I do is with them in mind and how I can you know, pave a way or, or make, you know, inspire them in any way. So absolutely. And I look forward to being a mom one day. And oh, I think very it's great soon. to see mother like you <laughs> doing amazing work. Um, yeah. So Luce, so tell us anything else that you have coming up in, in your future and your work and um, yeah, just let us know. So uh, September, 2022 for uh, Hispanic Heritage Month for next year. There is a new book coming out. I can't share a lot of details. It's through Soaring Heights. I'm really, really excited. It is um, really pushing a lot about our culture. The illustrations are amazing. I believe pretty soon there's going to be a cover reveal and I'm very excited. Uh, I think the only thing I could share is like, it's a beautiful homage to my grandmother and grandmothers out there. Uh, I do have other projects that I'm working on slowly. And I do hope that this is not gonna only be uh, me sharing my culture through children's book. I do aspire to one day write some more elaborate work. So I've been dabbling with chapter books and more longer projects. Cause I feel like, you know, there's a message to share and not just for me, but for everyone out there. Uh, we could embrace every chapter we are in our life. like it's, it's, there's more, like we're constantly evolving. Absolutely. And Luz, what advice would you give your younger self? Oh, nowadays. Um, <laughs> eat the cake, cry it out. <laughs> Do the ugly dance, like literally like dance, take off the bra. I said it. <laughs> and then when you're done eating the tub of ice cream, write out everything your heart desires. I feel like the, the, mm. the universe is really listening to what you tell yourself and how you act with yourself. Yeah. And people fail to realize that. And I fail to realize that. I could happily say I didn't believe in me for a long time. And it took me a while to like dig deep to believe in what I was doing, that it has an impact. So now when I meet with kids and I see them where they're at in life, it doesn't matter. I tell them embrace it all, all the flaws, all the mistakes. So if someone's telling me, oh, this cake looks really good, but I shouldn't have it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just serve myself that big slice with you. Do you want to eat it with me? Like, let's do this. We could write about it later because yeah. <laughs> I want people to know, yeah. like we have this one chance to just be as happy as we can. And it radiates. It really does. It's contagious. I love that, Luz. Thank you for sharing that. That's great advice. And <laughs> I will say from someone, uh, the past couple of years, I myself have been on this self-development, self-love journey, and I do daily affirmations. And I think that that has helped me a lot when you believe in yourself and you believe that you are enough. And I think that's a common, um, no matter who I've talked to, it's a common thing where we don't feel enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not Or we don't enough, belong. But or, or, or we, we don't, don't belong. belong. Yeah. yeah. And I think in my experiences, like at, at years ago, I would tell some conferences and travel space, for example, like, hey, why don't we do something? And I pitched some ideas for, you know, Latinos and, and stuff. Maybe next year, maybe next year, maybe next year, maybe next year. And so I felt it, like it was kind of like, okay, just, you know, not now. Or I don't know. I didn't feel enough, I guess, because we just wanted to be included in the conversation. Right. Oh, my and gosh. So, yes. Um, so I relate to that. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, and that, and that I had to just tell myself, you know what, I'm enough. And I think that just for anyone, no matter what space, what age they are to tell, to just affirm to themselves that you are enough, you are seen, you are appreciated. Um, and I think that's what is, is a, what I tell myself. And I think it's a great message to tell everyone because I've probably been to like 61 countries so far and every, even if the language is different, the culture is different, the history is different. We fundamentally want the same things, right? We want to be happy. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. We just want to be included. We want to feel like welcome. So um, that's why I think it's the power of like what you're doing, storytelling. It's very, very powerful. 
helpful and it can be very impactful. And I think what you're doing too with, you know, with your books and, and your speaking um, is just letting people know that, you know, they feel, you know, they're always enough, you know, and um, it's, it's really important and being Latina as well. I, I think it's amazing. Thank so, you. Thank what you. I, I want to share one more thing before yeah. uh, we come to a close. I think one of the most important messages I've been sharing lately, because a lot of people think, oh, she wrote those books. She got them out there. It's, it's not that easy. Like my last book, I got 75 no's. Like that's 70 times wow. me convincing myself. I still want to do this. Like when you get a lot of no's, yes. you start to believe it. And Regardless of the no, a little voice inside my head was like, well, it's okay. That may be uh, not right now. Oh, there weren't the right people to work with. And it's okay because it probably the project wasn't right for them. You weren't right for, the, for them. It's like something's happening, right? It's almost like an interview process. And I remember the 75 no's, something that I learned from it was that although the no's were coming in hard and they were making me question my worth, and I decided to still go forward, I realized then if I keep getting into this negative space saying like, I have to validate the no, I will never validate myself. So I can't convince anyone else that I'm a yes. So I have to say yes to myself. And it took me a long time to get into that mindset. So now when I get a no on something, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry that it's a no for today. I can't wait in the future when you turn and we could work on something and it's a big yes for both of us because that's how we have to look at it and how we could push ourselves forward because I understand that struggle and I and I keep thinking about how our families and communities came from that struggle from being told no not having opportunities calladita te ves mas bonita and all those all those idioms that we grew up knowing but look at us we're here Yes. And we're smiling. We are here <laughs> and we are smiling. Yes. And despite all that, like same. And and I've been told no or you know, not now, or um, you know, oh, but you're a woman, or oh, you know, what you know, in different ways. I've been I've felt um a lot of blocks, but I think when you you believe in yourself and you believe in something, for me it's always been bigger than myself as well. It's like there's a it's it becomes a movement, right? And it yes. becomes such a beautiful thing to be a part of. And um, and I think you're right on so many ways. I think it um it takes you to to really believe in yourself and keep going no matter what. And you'll hear a lot of the stories, um, like a lot of the successful and most famous people, they heard a lot of no's. They've gotten a lot of rejections, but they kept going. And in LA, there's this famous saying um, that one of my professors would, uh, hosting you know, professors and, and coaches would tell me, she's like, in LA, an overnight success is eight years of hard work. So usually you know when you see these um you know people who are famous and doing great overnight but then you take back and you learn their journey it may be eight to ten years of non-stop hard work alignment you know behind the scenes investing in their skill set and their mindset and all this um so yeah and and you know the ones who become more successful are the ones who don't give up they don't yeah. give up no matter what you know and I think that is, is, you know, 70, 70 or 75 notes. Wow. I mean, you just refine you the pitch. So That's all you do. You refine the pitch, you know, your voice right. and you know, your market a little bit better, but the nose, I tell you, I could dance merengue all over the nose. I'll be like, no, 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 no. There comes the yes. So <laughs> and I'll dance to it. <laughs> Yes, and I think that that's really inspiring because anyone who's watching now or in the future, um, when they hear your story and your journey, maybe they'll read your books and buy them for them or their children, or, you know, anything um, that they will know that it, it is possible because I think uh, another common fear, like I had fear of success, but some people have fear of failure. So I failed many, many times, but I look at it as a growing thing. I look at it, oh, okay, kind of like, okay, it's not, it's not the right time, not the right opportunity, but I keep going. It's when I became successful and people were hearing me and seeing me where I was uncomfortable because I didn't, you know, so those are some things, but 
I think there's a lot of talented people out there, mm -hmm. a lot of talented writers and, and youth and, and just in, 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 in many ways that um, even if they hear a no or not now, keep it going, keep going. <laughs> look at Luz, look at Luz, follow her, follow her journey. You know? I, I relate to that fear. I think my fear now is not, like I don't think about like being the most successful, being the most like, like it, like getting all awards. A lot of people do it for different merits. I fear if I dim my light and I dim my message. Mm. That's my biggest fear, because regardless of what's said out there, it's really publishing is really hard, and I've heard it all. I heard comments that kind of dilute our message and our and what we're trying to affirm I'm trying to affirm black and brown kids that look like my family and they show the plethora of what it is to be Latino I can't do that if I'm not true to my message so that's my biggest fear because I want people to know that they could be perfect within their own right just as they are and bringing their Latinidad home all the time even when they say, pass me the deso, when everything is mixed up, because we have that beautiful mashup of being Latino and also here in the United States. Yes, yes. And, and that's such a beautiful message, uh, Luz, and you are doing that. And how, you know, just as we start to wrap up, I mean, I feel like we could talk for so much longer, and I hope we do. I and do too. I'm so grateful. <laughs> That we connected and, and, and that power to fly also connected us. Um, how can our attendees and audience find you, uh, contact you? Do let us know. Sure. Uh, I'm, you can find me on Amazon. Um, I have many books there. Also my website, loosemac.com. I'm also on social media. I'm really easy to reach. And I also do a lot of community service and book readings within my community in the Bronx, as well as Washington Heights, because I hope one day that when our kids see us, they know they could be that too. So thank you so much. Yes, yes, thank you. And thank you, Powder to Fly. <laughs> thank you. I have just been like throwing digital confetti off screen and like typing in our <laughs> private chat, like, yes, this is, this is so inspiring. And I'm, uh, and Luz, you and I had a chance to speak last year, Jeanette, yes. thank you so much for your thoughtful <laughs> moderation. Uh, I'm like taking notes here. Uh, I just, before we move on, I just wanted to say to both of you, thank you so much for thank using you. the power of storytelling to be the change we want to see. Um, it's so important. And someone said earlier um, that I had no idea I think, yes, Luz, you wrote, I had no idea that me writing this book would take me this far. So powerful. Um, and you never know who's reading, listening, or watching. So hopefully someone just needed to hear those messages today to continue to empower us. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Yes, this is such a great way to kick off the summit with the two of you. Um, thank you so much again, Luz. Thank you, Jeanette. Um, so, and you all are both in Miami, right? I'm jealous you all can probably hang out. <laughs> I'm in the Bronx, but soon I'll be in Miami chasing Jeanette. How about that? Okay, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. Awesome. So I am currently in Patagonia in San Martin de los Andes, um, original lands of the Mapuche people. And I recently went to uh, El Bozón last weekend for um, alternative education encuentro. Wow. And so everything you all are saying now is helping me reflect more and more just the power of storytelling, how we need the folks in our family or in our community, especially to help, you know, encourage us to share our stories. Luz, I love that your, your child wanted to write a story uh, because she was inspired by your story. And hopefully we can just keep passing that on. Yeah, yeah. It made me cry, to be honest. That was like my, that was my, it, like my award, my, my, my favorite thing of the year. She writing her story. Oh. Thank you both. Thank you both. All right. Let's keep this flowing. This is Thank awesome. You. Thank you both. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your days. <laughs>